Beginning in the middle of the 19th century, anthropologists and other social scientists began to turn their attention to religion. Since religion is a universal human practice found in every culture, they started to study the nature of religion and to explain how religion first began. In this presentation, we'll take a brief look at the most prominent sociological and psychological theories about the origins of religion. One of the first was the anthropologist Edward Tyler. His book, Religion in Primitive Culture, started the study of religion, its origins, and its place within society. He believed religion was humanity's earliest attempt to explain the world and how the world works. Tyler thought that religion began when early humans dreamed about people who had died. These dreams led people to believe the dead were still alive, but in a different world. Where did the dead go, when they still exist in dreams? According to Tyler, that led to the belief in spirits. People in our dreams are alive in a different form. We have spirits that live a separate existence in a spirit world, while still interacting with us. A belief in spirits resulted in the earliest form of religion, which was animism. Animism is the idea that everything in the world is inhabited by a spirit. Tyler said that, for early humans, all nature is possessed, pervaded, and crowded with spiritual beings. Over time, he said, people began to worship the more important spirits, which was the start of formal religious practice. Those more important spirits were consolidated into particular gods and goddesses, or polytheism. And then, through cultural evolution, the many gods were consolidated into a belief in one god, or monotheism. James Fraser, a follower of Tyler, and his concept of cultural evolution, said that religion began with the practice of magic. In his famous book, The Golden Bough, he suggested there had been three stages so far in human progress. Magic, which gave rise to religion, and then religion gave rise to science. Religious magic refers to the attempts by people to control the forces of nature through rituals and spells. These practices turned into religion once people started trying to control spirits or gods. For Fraser, praying in the name of Jesus was a form of magical thinking. Fraser said there were two types of religious magic, contagious magic and homeopathic magic. Contagious magic believes that two things that were once connected can continue to have power over each other. In voodoo, for example, having a strand of someone's hair can give the priestess control over that person. Homeopathic magic believes that like produces like. For example, if a tribe performs a hunting ritual, ceremonially recreating a successful hunt, they believe they will have a successful hunt in real life. These could all be said to be examples of religious magical thinking. Emile Durkheim was one of the first sociologists and the man most responsible for creating sociology as a social science. Since religion is found in all societies, he devoted a great deal of time to studying religion and its functions within human culture. Durkheim said that what we refer to as God is actually our society. Society creates us as humans. It exists before we're born and will exist after we die. It teaches us how to think and what to think. It teaches us how to talk and the language we use. It teaches us correct behaviors and controls our impulses, essentially civilizing us. Society is the basis for all we know. It is the real basis for a belief in something greater than ourselves. 
When we worship a god, he said, we are really worshipping our society. That is why religions always exist within a societal context. According to Durkheim, religion is used by society in several ways. Religion promotes social cohesion by providing members of the same culture with similar beliefs. Religion also serves as a method of social control through the use of moral codes and acts like a policeman and judge. Finally, religion provides meaning to our lives. A famous critique of religion was offered by Karl Marx, an economist whose analysis of capitalism also led him to an analysis of society and religion. He believed the economic system determined the nature of society and shaped human consciousness. Since he saw capitalism as basically unfair, he believed social forces used religion to justify that unfairness and keep an economic system in place that benefited a few at the expense of many. Marx said the promise of a wonderful future heaven makes the unfairness of this life seem more bearable. Similarly, when people are convinced that obedience to the system is God's will, they are more easily exploited by the wealthy. Religion protects the interest and status of the wealthy by convincing the masses to accept their poor circumstances. Instead of gold now, they'll get streets of gold after they die. Famously, Marx described religion as the opium of the people. Opium is the basis for our strongest painkilling medications, like morphine. Marx was saying the purpose of religion is to deaden pain so that people do not notice how they are being exploited and abused by economic forces and the people who profit unfairly from their labor. Sigmund Freud was greatly interested in religion, seeing religion as a universal expression of the human psyche. Freud believed religion was a fantasy created by our unconscious mind and projected on a global scale. As a fantasy, he regarded religion as a universal form of neurosis. Religion, he believed, was based in an unconscious desire for a father figure. He was struck by the masculine representation of God in Western religions. That fantasized father, he thought, arose from the human need to feel protected and secure. Freud also compared the ritualistic behavior of religious people with people who suffer from obsessive-compulsive disorder. People with OCD performed repeated acts such as washing their hands every time they touch a doorknob to protect themselves from their anxieties. He thought religious rituals such as ritualistically praying before meals or going to church every Sunday served a similar purpose. The comfort of rituals helps to allay our existential fears. These are each ways that social scientists have attempted to explain the origins of religion. What do you think of their ideas?